Hi. Yes, I'm outside. I got out of the lab, decided to get some sun on a beautiful Sydney day. And yes, that is the uh, original uh, 2000 Olympics stadium behind me. That is the original uh, cauldron that they lit up and it didn't work, but they bodged it to fix it up. Beauty. Anyway, I'm here at Sydney Olympic Park uh, to attend CBIT 2014. So I haven't been to uh, CBIT before because it's not really in the electronics uh, field. It's more of like a business technology kind of thing where, you know, business people get together. Heck, heck the keynote is the uh, New South Wales Premier. So, uh, yawn fest. Uh, anyway, there's some um, startups here. Um, a couple of hardware uh, startups, so it should be rather interesting. I've got my media pass, so yay, I'm the owner. Look at that, terrific. So I thought we'd go in, check it out. Let's go. Yeah, it's not like an electronics uh, industry show, but it could be some interesting stuff here. Let's give it a go. And that poor guy has angel wings on. Go figure, he drew the short straw, obviously. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastard. And there's always someone with a fancier camera rig than mine. I won't get in the way, but uh, check it out. He's getting uh, time. <laughs> he's getting time lapse uh, video of this thing. Um, several hundred uh, shots. You need 25 shots per second, obviously. To so he'll get a nice video panning shot of well this stand, I guess. So it'll take 15, 20 minutes for that thing to rise all the way up and uh, you can see it's just uh, taking individual shots there and uh, in the end he'll end up with like one second worth of footage. <laughs> Fantastic. And I'm here at the Cartesian co-stand with Ariel. Good Hello. Ariel. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and he's, yes, he's an EV blog viewer. Yes, he I am. Is. I love it. Awesome. We all and, love it. And you guys, and with John as well. G'day, John. And uh, you guys have done a Kickstarter. Yes, we have. How much did you raise? We raised 140,000 US dollars on our Kickstarter back in November, December of last year. Right. And that was selling nearly 100 printers. And, and we're shipping out the first batch yep. to uh, the first half of the Kickstarter awards in two months. Two months. And we're scaling up for production right now. Okay, awesome. And we've got a couple of prototypes. And I love how you've done the laser cut Thank you. Ac acrylic here, and then you've just put the reliefs on it and then bend it around yeah. the corner this like is, that. This is called kerfing, or uh, actually, cur to kerfing? give credit to the person who invented it, yep. it's called a snidge. A snidge. Snidge hinge. A snidge right. hinge, or a snidge, snidge joint. Lab. So a snidge labs that a invented snidge it. snidge joint. Yeah, we call it kerfing. Right. And mostly people do it in uh, plywood when they laser cut plywood. Oh, yes, yes, I've seen it done. But it works yep. very well in acrylic as well. Yep. So uh, we sell two versions of the kit. One of them is uh, an assemble at home, yep. and the other one is a pre assembled version. The assemble at home is 1,600, the pre assembled is 2,100. The world's first desktop circuit board printer. Well, I, it, uh, it's not the world's only desktop circuit no, board printer because since we've launched, we now have one competitor. Good, right. I'm glad we have them. Who's that? Is that a that's, commercial that's, one? Uh, no, that's another desktop one. That's AGIC. AGIC. Look them up. AGIC Print. We like our competition. They're Japanese. Yep. Excellent. Um, and, but we beat the Japanese to market. That was fantastic, fun. <laughs> fantastic. And it prints conductive ink onto it pretty much any material you like. Yep, it prints yep. in silver rather in silver. than printing in copper. Right. So we release all of the designs and all of the ink and all of the circuit boards open source so everyone can source. everyone can look at how it works it's not currently open source we're waiting until we ship the first batch course, don't want to give our competition too much no, of a no, head start yep. but when it does ship everything's going open source so more than happy to tell you what's inside the inks yes, we use two inkjet cartridges yep. one of them has silver nitrate the other one has ascorbic acid and what they do is they're both in water they're both liquid they jet down onto the surface of the substrate when they mix they form silver and right. also a few other little byproducts. Yep. And that silver is conductive and sticks right to the surface of the material. And then that first layer isn't hugely conductive, especially on paper, you need several layers. So on paper, we usually print about 10 layers, whereas we can also print on FR4. Here's an mm -hmm. FR4 board, and we can print is that exact same board as this one that's upside down. 
printed on paper. And you'll notice that these both have a Soic chip in the middle, yep. and even the paper one, yeah, it's yeah, soldered. It's we can solder solid. to the paper, is it's it amazing. Is it regular paper? It is re okay, so it is regular paper in yep. that we bought it from the craft store earlier today for 50 cents a sheet. <laughs> right. Not something special that we manufacture. Right. Everyone can get their hands on. And we these are yes. standard HP uh, cartridges. Yes, they are. And um, you're just emptying these out and refilling them. We remanufacture them ourselves. That is uh, awesome. And you're able to buy these uh, secondhand, yep. like empty. Yep. Uh, we can buy them empty, we can buy them fill, and we can remanufacture them. Right. We okay. do all of our remanufacturing and our building yep. in house in Australia. Awesome Australia made. And I like how you've manufactured your, uh, Go ahead. your snake in here. Oh, that's Mike. He's going to like you saying oh, that. Right, okay. I told him we shouldn't do that because it was too much effort, but he convinced no, me when no. he showed it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there he is, over there. He's hiding. <laughs> everyone's, sorry. <laughs> All right, everyone's here. They've had a great crowd here. Yeah, it's yeah. Been, we've been, been busy. We've been insanely busy. I didn't yep. think we were going to be uh, busy for so long, but we ran out of business cards yeah. on the right. first day, wow. and since then, uh, we've been printing them out. Printing so that's a conductive cards. business card. Yeah. Ah, there you go, Dave. Nice. Go ahead and All measure right. that. I can measure that. That is conductive. So what sort of resistance are we talking about mm. per centimetre, per layer, yep. that kind of jazz? So this this board here, yep. this is printed on paper, and paper is one of the more problematic ones right. to print on because it's so porous. It's so porous. So right. this is just one yep. layer. We wouldn't yep. usually do one layer on uh, paper. We just needed sure. to get this printed very quickly yep. so that we could give it to the yeah. crowd. Um, normally you do about 10 layers on paper, and then right. you're looking at a comparable uh, conductivity to copper, to one ounce or, or half ounce really? copper. Yes. And okay. you can just print more and more layers. You don't yep. get an appreciable height change, yeah, yeah. but you do get a decrease in resistance. Because so you can dial in the resistance. Of the, because of the density of the yes. silver. Yes, exactly. That, that's absorbed yep. into the material. Mm -hmm. And then we can also print on Kapton. That was a new yes. one. Yes, so, so you this can make is, our flex circuits. Yep, yep, that's an LED matrix. Yep. The next question everyone has is about resolution. Yes. So. We can't quite get the same. So I, I say the standard board house can do an 8,000, 8,000 track gap. Easy. Maybe 6,000, 6,000. Pretty 6, easy. Like, yeah. 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 We can't quite achieve the same level of resolution as right. that. Okay. We can achieve around about 15 to 20,000 track gap, now, which is problem, still pretty good. It's pretty good, but the problem with that is people who want to prototype their PCBs mm -hmm. are going to prototype yeah. it for production yeah. and then use this as a prototype. And exactly. they're going to use 8.8. 8. Yeah. So what have you got that potentially upgrades to yeah yeah do so that. we are doing that right now right. okay in the last month we've already managed to double our resolution to get down to that 15 right. 20 mark yep. and that was all with software upgrades Got we it. haven't upgraded the hardware in a while yep. and right now our software engineers are back in Brisbane <laughs> uh, we incorrectly but we knew we were doing it incorrectly assumed that the nozzles on the cartridges were all in a straight line Oh no, they're staggered. They're staggered. They're staggered exactly. We yes. knew they were staggered, but we just yep. didn't have time to program for them being staggered. Right. So if you have a look at this, you see that track down the bottom. Yep. It's got a really nice clean edge. Yep. And you see that track oh, running up the side. Can, it's got I a bit can, of a wavy edge. I can That's see the it offset. Wavy. That's it. That's the offset. I didn't think it was that it's visible. It's that big. It's that big. It wow. is that big. Okay. I thought it was like in the order no, of micron. It's offset. actually rather large. <laughs> So we knew that, but we just didn't right. have time to program it. Got it. So when we go it. back and fix the model of the cartridge in the software, yep. you'll get uh, the wavy sided track being having a nice smooth edge just like the other one. So uh, there's potential for the increased yes, resolution Yes, we're there. trying to increase the resolution yep. right now. Excellent. Um, Excellent. You can, on FR4 and uh, Kapton, yep. just get to TSOP. So okay. half so it. Yep. Yep. You can so just get will there. the current printer that ships be physically capable of the steps required for higher resolution and it's just a software upgrade? Yes, or? yes. It is it, it is. is at the moment we're right. dealing with about three times the st we, we we step three times before we do one firing. So we okay. can take that down by three times. Oh, okay. But the yep. idea that you can just really quickly prototype those how things. How quickly? That's the how best quickly? part. That's how, the best how, part. What's That's some, the best part. Okay, okay, okay. Print? So this, this. Yeah, there, there, yeah. Uh, so this game took 15, 20 minutes to design yep. the board layout. Yep. Then it took 30 minutes or so to print yep. and then another 15 minutes to assemble. So we're looking at a turnaround time from idea to working board yep. of an hour. 
Yeah, yeah. So one of the things, we haven't finalized the price of the cartridges themselves yet right. because we haven't shipped the first batch. Okay. We haven't finished our supply chain with the cartridges, uh -huh. but we're looking at around about $50 for a pair of cartridges. You have to buy right. them in pairs because you need both. And how many yeah. typical size boards can that do? This is the best part. So if you go down to the office supply store, yeah. you buy a $50 inkjet cartridge, it's about how much they cost. Yep. They have four milliliters of ink in them. I know, or it's about. ridiculous. ridiculous. And, and they what can they physically hold 100 for? or 200. They can, uh, yeah. Ours can hold 42 milliliters it's and they an come with rot. 42 that, milliliters. They, right, so you don't short change. No, no. Excellent. And that's enough Until for... you figure out that's the best way to do business and then you're no, going to be shipping No, 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 more. we're not going to be doing that. We're not going to be doing that. <laughs> right. Uh, the, uh, this board was yep. about four layers. I don't know what the size of the board is, you yep. know, a few centimeters by a few centimeters. You can print dozens and dozens and dozens of these on a single cartridge a single right. pair of cartridges. Dozens. So we're looking at the cost right. of the silver ink yep. of being about 20 cents for this board. That's pretty good. So what sort of electronics have you got inside this thing? I see you've got yep. a custom uh, board on there for the cart. Uh, yes, the, uh, thank you, I designed that. Cable. Okay. So yeah, that's, nice. that's done with pogo pins on the back there to make a connection ah, to the- Ah, physical pogo. Yeah, yeah. A shield on an Arduino. Yeah, okay, there's a bit of, of a hodgepodge back here. Oh, is there hot glue? Is yeah, there hot glue? There's no hot glue. Don't look at it. <laughs> Don't look at this part. <laughs> uh, this is the motherboard. It's a right. shield on a mega. Yep. And uh, we designed that ourselves, and yep. we released the part. We released the design open source. Well, we will yep. be in a couple of months. And there's a very there's a close up now. Thank what you. we're what we're actually uh, seeing here. It looks like uh, we're getting some uh, light glare from the stand here. So. Sorry about that, it's not the best, but it, uh, that is just glare from the lights. But you can see that is reflowed, and this is the one that's printed on the uh, FR4. FR4 board. Yep. So can we whack another one in? Let's try this. That's printed on Kapton, yep. and we can see the conductive... Well, we can see the solder. Is that leaded or lead free? Leaded. Leaded? It works with lead-free yeah. as well, but okay. I prefer leaded because it reflows at a lower temperature. Yeah, yeah, right. Yep. Of course. And here's it on paper. And this is a paper one on craft. On on what uh, density bond paper is that? Um, I think it's 200 GSM. Yes, yeah, right, right. It's, it's actually not like pure paper. It's called linen paper. Oh, okay, yeah, linen so paper. Because, because okay. It... But that that looks really impressive for printing on paper. That's fantastic. Awesome. Brilliant. I hope it does well. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. All right, mate. And I'm here with Danny from GoFar, and he's a viewer as well, and we met at the electronics uh, show back in 2010, I think, and now you've got your own startup. Tell I us about it. I do. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so my startup is called GoFar, and basically we're about giving drivers real-time information as they drive to help them understand how to save fuel right. uh, in their cars. Via a wireless, uh, via, so you plug into the system, the car system That's via right. ODB. That's is correct. That, yep. that is. Right. So we collect data from the vehicle over the diagnostics port, yep. which is on uh, every vehicle manu yep. manufactured in the United States since '96, mm -hmm. uh, all vehicles in Australia since 2006, right. all vehicles in Europe since 2001, and all vehicles globally okay. since 2008. So most vehicles have this. Uh, it's a plug and play device that we, we plug into the car, we can access the vehicle sensors on there. Uh, we also have some tech built into our um, plug and play device which tracks the vehicle in 3D space. So we've got uh, six degree of freedom motion sensors. Ah, nice. We're able to pull those two data sets together yep. and uh, we can do some pretty clever stuff uh, with the results. So we can track, for example, uh, energy flow through the car. Oh, right. So okay. When you jump on the brake, yep. uh, you're in fact dumping energy, and we're able to measure right. the cost. As of in that. the kinetic energy of the car, and that's correct. Right, interesting. So actually, measure the cost of your actions in real time. So we have a, an iPhone uh, app yep. that shows you this in real time, and we'll have a bit of a closer yeah, look yeah, at yeah. it afterwards. If so, have is a real time uh, Formula One inspired display that's ah. attached to your dashboard. It's always on. Uh, basically, it's very simple. Green is most efficient. Yep. If you're hitting red, it means you're wasting energy. And if you're blue, it means you need to go a little harder. Because actually, the most efficient way to accelerate is not necessarily the slowest. 
So we might okay. be telling you to right. push down on that throttle, which is yep. counterintuitive. Okay, counterintuitive, it is. So when we were doing this, uh, started this project, we we're looking at how do you get information to the driver yep. safely in a way that they can understand and read quickly. And we took a look at what Formula One were doing. Very good point. Awesome. This does work yeah. in electric cars too. Yeah, excellent. And I really like right. that you've already, I've already figured, figured that it out. out. I've already figured it out. It's, it's obvious. Show us. Here, here we've got a, a representation There's our little of dongle. Yep. dongle, plug and play like yep. a USB stick. Uh, the diagnostics port is normally just down on the right hand side below yep. the bonnet puller on most right. cars. So it's actually in the driver's compartment. You don't need to get under the, yep. under the hood or do anything in the engine compartment. Plug and play. Yep. Uh, then we've got our display strip which just mounts with uh, an adhesive strip uh, okay. to the dash or wherever you'd like it to be. Right. It gives you the real time feedback. So this has all the smarts on board. It crunches mm -hmm. the numbers, yep. does all the energy calculations, figures out the car's sweet spot. It right. actually learns your oh, it car. Learns. Okay. So right. Very we, nice. we don't take a one size fits all approach. Yep. Uh, so we can see our fuel tank, we can see we have $52 in the fuel tank here, yep. and if we brake in an inefficient way, we can see the dollars in fact uh, adding up. Yep. So you will see this motion bubble here, which is our kinetic energy, right. contract Got it. and okay. leak out of the braking channel. We'll see the, the red drop That's here. That's nice intuitive type display, I like it. Thank you. Alright, and yes we've got hardware. Show us some hardware. We've got All prototypes. Right. You, you bought these in because you knew I was coming. I knew you were coming, Dave, awesome. so I thought some eye candy was well and truly awesome. on the agenda. Thank you very much. That Vera board classic, classic prototype. How old is this one? Uh, this one is two years old. Yep. Uh, this was testing all of our, our power supplies. So we've got all the simulated loads on the different, right. on the different voltage rails there. Uh, so we're testing out the components. Uh, so, this so was, they were the individual power supply modules you're using in the final board down here, is that it? That's right, yep. Right. yep. Uh, we've got this lovely first prototype here, which I'm, which I'm quite, quite oh, there proud we go. of. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful work. Yes. Yes. Uh, are they individual transistors? And They yep. are. Fantastic. Yep. And a, a lovely um, LCD display on the front there. Terrific. That was a, a solid weekend's work uh, in that yeah, one. solid weekend's work, yeah. <laughs> and then we moved on to the next prototype, which was right. built up of the, uh, the PIC demo boards ah, there. Ah, you're using the PIC32 processor. That's right. And you're still using that in the final one? We are. How has that been? Has it been a good process to work well, with? I think it's been quite good. Yeah, yeah? right. I know there's a, there's a few other options out there, but uh, we've stuck oh, with the PIC. Oh, there's countless options, yep. It, it's so. filled all of the needs so far. Okay. And this is your final um, hardware, is it? This is it. This is yep. uh, prototype number four. Right. Uh, the next step from here, Dave, is going to be the uh, our production model. Right. How close are you to actually producing these in volume? So we're going to run a crowdfunding campaign before the end oh, of the year. Oh, you are? On what site? Uh, we're looking at Kickstarter. You are looking at Kickstarter? Yeah. Okay. We've got our... our uh, BLE, our Bluetooth low energy module here. Yep. Uh, six degree of freedom sensor. Yes. Uh, our PIC32, of course. Uh, we've got the, our, our uh, micro SD card here for extended memory. Uh, there's a port here that's going to connect to our peripheral device over I2C. Right. So we've got power and data over that uh, over the port. Yep. Uh, micro USB on there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a prototype, so the form factor is quite different hey, to the course. final design. Yep. yep. Uh, Which so, will look like that one we saw before on the. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So on the back we've got our uh, flash memory, yep. uh, real time clock over here, yep. and uh, the circuits down here are at the base uh, for communicating with the various uh, automotive OBD standards. Got it. And you can log data as well? Absolutely. Yep. So we've got memory on board. Uh, one of the key things about this product is it's always on. Uh, yep. whether or not your iPhone is connected. Right. Uh, it's always giving you feedback and always collecting data for you. So whenever you connect your app, uh, the data will update and you'll always have a full set of trip data. The price, target price is under $100. Under $100? Yeah. Yep. So uh, yep. we haven't, haven't decided on exactly the, the price, but we will, certainly for our Kickstarter campaign, yep. uh, we'll do a, a better price uh, mm -hmm. for the early adopters. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I hope it works for you. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much, Dave.
And I'm here with Josiah. He's from the University of Newcastle. Yes, yes, that's right. Just up the road, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit northeast Sydney, but uh, yep. yeah, awesome. And you're part of the uh, robotics group there, are you? Yeah, so I'm the team leader of the group called the Newbots, yep. and we actually have these little robots down oh, here. Oh, which we'll take a look at. Yep. They're fantastic, folks. They're yep. terrific. Actually, look how about them. I pick him up? Yeah, that... pick him up. Pick up the yeah, so, sucker. Here we so go. So these guys are fully autonomous little robots. They yep. play by themselves, and we <laughs> actually program them to do all of that. Yep. And they play uh, soccer, is that their goal? They play is soccer, yes. Is that yep. some sort of international contest? Yes, so there's an international World Cup for oh, robots. Okay, it's right. run every year, it's called Robo Cup, and yep. we compete in that. Have you won? They've We've won twice? in 2006 and 2008 the world title. Awesome. Yep, and there we're hoping for the top four this year. And well, with a robot that looks like that, <laughs> that is just awesome. <laughs> okay. and, yeah. yeah. What, what inspired the look? Um, this, well, this is actually designed by a group of universities. I think Astro Boy oh, must have designed, uh, must inspired have, yep, the look. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, right. So the actual, right. So it's more of a competition of firmware and intelligence. Is well, that here's the thing. It? So it's a competition of the robot platform. So everyone right. can build their own platforms. Right. Um, but we are a, a machine learning lab. So okay, got it. we ask the question: Can you take some of the weaker hardware around? and make it actually work better than the better hardware just Got by it. giving it more smarts. Got it. Excellent. And more sensors and everything else. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yep. What is power? Okay. Tell it hardware details. What have we yep. got here? What have we okay, got? So How we've many got, motors? We've what got types, 20, 20 motors. 20. They're all Dynamixel MX28s. Right. So they are serial servo motors. His yep. arm's coming off a bit. That's bad. Um, so they, they run through a serial bus and yep. they give us all position feedback and all the kind of information that we need to run a robot. What sort of serial bus? Uh, it's a half duplex RS-232, oh, it's just, really bad. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. okay. I thought you'd at least use RS-422, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we need something better, something right. in the 400s. Okay. So on the back we also have a... a that looks like a HDMI, HDMI, USB, Ethernet. There's actually a computer in there. Oh, I was going to say, so what type of it's got a low-end Atom netbook processor in there. Got it. Yep. Uh, so because you need the horsepower, or it was a better and or a better development it, platform. It was the best horsepower at the time, and right. Intel's generally a little bit easier to develop the um, software for the firmware right. and yep. all that right. kind of thing. Yeah, bunch of motors. There'd be a custom motor driver board. Uh, there's there? a custom motor driver board. Yep. Um, I think it's yep. it, it. All it is is a serial bridge. Really, it right. doesn't do a whole lot. Yep. Um, and it also has an IMU on it, so we have a gyroscope and accelerometer. Just the one? <coughs> um, just one there, gyroscope and right? accelerometer, okay. yep. Right, because, we, it, because it's got positional feedback from yes. the... Uh, for, so it knows where its yeah. arm is, it so, knows where so its So we, we have a kinematics chain that does all of that, right, and, yep. um, and, and our software is yep. all nicely set up, so you can just query you know, the location of anything from anywhere else in our kinematics chain. Right, got it. We also have um, deflection-based foot sensors there oh, so you can okay. see the foot sensor board and yeah, that's yeah. connected through the same serial bus there's right. a little bit of damage there but that's okay <laughs> that's all right yep right so they can sense when when it's like when it's actually standing up yeah so it's, it's four four points of contact right on okay. the four corners of the foot Okay. Where, where these yep. cables oh, come out. Oh, so it can, it can detect when it's <coughs> overbalancing because it knows it can it's only detect on two, all of that, yes. Right, because yeah. it's only on two feet or yeah, the, two, one where, side. Yeah, so right. we're having a few problems with smoothing out the signal there and we've got to get right. back to work on that to get more clean, okay. balanced signal out, but yes. Right. So the robots are bouncing around like crazy on this carpet, yep. you know, it's very springy. There's a lot of slip in the feet and um, because they have to work out where they are and we can't always see everything because we've only got one small camera, yep. um, what we've actually got to do is track our foot odometry. So it's very important that the feet don't slip. Got it. Um, so once you combine all that, yeah, you can see... It, it just fell over. There we go. He's standing up. Yeah. So um, they actually do 
fall over rather easily in this venue. Can we get him to... Uh, uh, I don't know if we can get him to fall over just yet, but yep. he falls over fairly frequently. <laughs> it's pretty easy to push him over. He doesn't have all that much balance ability. <laughs> right. Um, we're working on that. Um, one of the problems is the, the IMU data yep. that comes through is very noisy when you walk. Oh, of course. Be because because there, you're, you're hitting the ground the all the time. Yeah. There'd be the vibration. So, yeah. so that throws out a lot of our orientation data, um, and right. we have to we have to do some heavy filtering on that to make it work. He's only got the one camera. Yes. He's I'm only sorry. got a Logitech C905 camera C905, in him. C905. Yep. 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 Um, because of the atom, we only run that at 320 by 240. Got it. Because well, that's um, probably all you'd need anyway to get image recognition well, and stuff, is it? The, the, well, the thing is that we run on a symmetrical field, so we have to know when we see a goal exactly how far ah. it is so we don't get symmetry problems. So do you have to calculate <coughs> that in real time as the context exactly. where you, you have to go yep. there and it's yep. an unknown size? And, and it's a race. The more frames of image we get, the, right. the better quality our data. So, Interesting. So okay. our whole vision loop, even on that atom, yep. runs in about 8 milliseconds. What we can do is we yep. can use the, the kinematics of the robot and project down to the ground plane and find the bottom of the goals. Ah. Problem is, again, when we start walking, yep. that throws everything out and we can't track it very well. Can they communicate with each other? Is that, yep. is they that have part wi of the contest? Okay. They have Wi-Fi. Um, there's actually a part of the contest that's going to come in in the next few years called mm -hmm. the drop-in competition. What's that? The idea is that they have a standard way of communicating what they're doing and what they're thinking. Uh -huh. And then all different teams put one robot in to make a, a whole uh, team. Oh, a whole team, yeah. right. So the robot is no longer playing with other robots where you know what they're going yep. to do. So all it's right. a whole other level of... And he's about to kick. Yep. He's going to kick. Maybe. Yep. Oh, he's going to... Yes, did he? No. <laughs> no. So he's, so he's actually seen where the ball is at the moment. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's that walk thing with yeah. the springiness. Okay, uh, that, that's the springiness of the floor yeah. doing that. Okay. You didn't, you didn't uh, count on that here. Well, the thing is, it, it's different everywhere we go, and we haven't done the walk training. What we All actually right. do is we he send shoots, them... He scores! Yep. Woohoo! What we actually do is we send them for sprints around the field. Okay. Um, and, and we do machine learning optimization on the walk engine. Right. Lots of noise in that so that the robots are a bit more robust. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, he, he kind of gets running a bit too fast and yeah. then trips himself up. He gets all excited, gets all excited, yep. come on. Yeah, so our code is actually available. It's open source. Oh, it's it, on it GitHub. Oh, it is open source? Okay. Yep, you can even watch our development logs and see how many swear words are in there. Fantastic. So there you go, that was CBIT 2014 and I was pretty impressed actually. I had uh, no idea there'd be as much hardware stuff as there was here. And well, <laughs> I ran out of time to just go around and look at stuff. Too busy shooting stuff, talking to people. Yeah, a few people recognized me, uh, came up and wanted to chat, which is always fantastic. And uh, I'll be coming back next year because I think it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's not for engineering, electronics, but there were a lot of tech companies here, a lot of tech uh, startups, I only talked to a few of them, but I'm very impressed, so definitely be back. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time. Back to the lab. Uh.